Hey everyone. Okay, so my name is Haley. I commonly go by the name Albino Wolf or Jasper Art Online. And recently I hosted a poll on DeviantArt asking if you guys wanted to see me basically make a tutorial on how I do things and whatnot, because I've had some questions and I thought it would be nice to put it in a video format with a voiceover. Just a heads up, my audio is not the best and you might hear barking every now and then, but hopefully that can be forgiven. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was show you guys how I shade. Now before I begin, I just want to specify that this isn't the way everyone should shade and I'm in no way saying that this is the be all and end all of shading. This is just the way I do things and I am aware that there are plenty of other artists out there who do things differently, some who actually do similar things and honestly it's just, you know, it's a matter of preference. If you like how it, if something come, looks then I suggest you give it a try. So I'm gonna actually be doing two methods of shading today. I'm gonna first shade my character Amani, who you can see on screen currently. She's my persona, and she will be shaded using what I would like to call just base shading, which basically implies that I'm shading her very basically. There's not really any set method to it. It's kind of just, you know, it's the kind of shading if you looked into the Lion King films, especially Lion King 2, you'd probably see that. <laughs> I'll, I'll explain as I go. After I'm done shading her, though, I want to shade another character of mine, but in more intense lighting and using the kind of lighting that suits his character and gives him like an evil vibe, which is all he is. And that way I just want to express like different ways I shade depending on like whether or not I'm doing a scene or if I'm doing, you know, a character or whatnot. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this then. So as I said, I have a money here. And what I'm going to do for her at the moment is she's already been colored in and lined and everything's ready for her. So I'm going to pick a color here to shade her with. Oftentimes what I like to do is just take some form of brown or some form of maybe a bit of a darker red. And you'll notice I've done this in my other videos. I just kind of splash it on without much thought. So it's going to look kind of sad right now if a lot of it's going to just be like random and just me giving myself a general little splash of colors and you know, that'll be that. Also keep in mind I'm doing this on a completely separate layer. I like to do this on top of my line art layer and, and my coloring layer. So once I have all the base colors splashed down there, I go to my, my layer and I change this, this shading layer to multiply. So then it'll look like this. After that, I set that layer to, like, layer's opacity to either 50 or 40%. It, it kind of depends. On, I mean, sometimes I'll set it to 50 and then I'll change it later. Right now, this is on 50 and that's looking all right for me. So let's zoom in here and get started. So what I do is obviously I splash down the color. Then I just take my eraser and I start erasing in the areas that the light would be hitting her. Like I said, this is very basic, and this is kind of just the way a lot of... Like, you'll see I shade a lot of characters like this when it comes to doing full shaded bodies for commissions, or if I do it for customs, you know, they're just... It's basic shading to kind of make the character look nice, but not, I guess, take away from the, how the character is supposed to look. Like, it doesn't hide too much of the markings, and, you know... Once again, I'm not an expert. I've actually, I the way I learned was by watching other people. I was able to pick up from not only the films, but I was able to watch how other people do it, watch tutorial videos, and just get ideas, you know? And since then, I've kind of just gone my own way with it. So like I said, I do encourage you guys to, like, not only just figure this out by, like, how I'm doing it, but just, you know, watch some other artists do it and figure out what you like, you know? Like some artists are very detailed in how they do things, others keep it more simple. I definitely think I keep mine more simple and I'm quite happy about that. I don't feel like I need a lot of overcomplicated shading, especially for some characters. But like I said, I'll get into the more complicated stuff later when I shade my other character. And money's got this strange mane that I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna do here. So what you see me doing here is also something I do a lot. I grab my lasso tool and I kind of just outline the area I want gone, and then I just press delete, and it goes away. 
The only problem with this is it's very, you can see the edges are very sharp, so I'm gonna just go in there with my blur tool and just smooth it out a little bit and make it look a little nicer. I can already tell you this lighting, this shading color of me is a bit intense, so I'll probably go back and change the opacity to maybe a 40, I think. I'll do that afterwards. Might be nice. Okay, see, so that's just basic, you know, the splashing of the color in certain areas. If something looks wrong to me, I'll go back later. Like, right now, I don't exactly like how her tuft looks, so I'm gonna do my lasso trick here and just maybe make it look a little bit better. There we go. Ooh. And there she is. So, like I said, I feel like this color right now is very dark, and it's almost blending a bit too much with my line art. So, I'm gonna take it from a 40 to a... wait, from a 50 to a 40. And just make it look a little more subtle. So it's still there and it's still obvious, but, you know, I think this does look a little bit better. So after that, what I normally do is I put a layer on top of the current sh shadow layer. And I find another color, a little bit darker than the current one I'm using. I normally go for more of a dark, a bit of a darkish red. And I do this with my gradient tool. Just like that. So this is basically creating more depth and shadow um, on the character. Again, this is very much a Lion King 2 kind of way of shading. I don't know if you, like, if you study their um, screen caps, you'll notice that they do this. Not so much in the first Lion King as it does is in the second one. I kind of have taken both films' ways of shading and I've kind of, like, mixed it into, like, a weird amalgam. I shouldn't try to say big words, but you get what I mean. <laughs> like, just a mix of shading. So once again, I'll take that same layer that I just applied the gradient to and I'll change it to multiply. But this time, I'll set it to a lower opacity, so either 30 or 40, whatever suits me. So this is 40, and I'm 30. And personally, I think I prefer 30. Because, like, this character of mine right now, um, she's a very light-skinned character, so she... Often I find really harsh, dark shadows don't work so much on the lighter characters, like white characters or pale cream characters. Like, I feel like you don't need as intense lighting for that. Also, something I'm going to quickly go back and do is I'm going to go back to my original shading and I'm going to go to Filter. Keep in mind, I use Photoshop for all my drawings. I'm going to go down to Blur and then Gaussian Blur. So you're going to see that that just like softened the shadows immensely. So I don't really like that. So I'm going to set it to a lower setting. So the edges of the shadows are basically still soft, but not too soft because I don't want it to blend too much. But, you know, I'm quite happy with how that looks. Cool. So now I'm going to go again on top of all my shadow layers for this and find myself a nice yellow or a nice maybe an orange. I don't know. Like maybe we'll go quite high up there and just find a nice decent color. And again, using the gradient tool, we just do that. So this is like the idea that the sun's hitting her back and that's how she's going to be lit. And I'm going to set that la layer either to overlay or soft light. For this, I think I'll stick to overlay. And I often will set that layer's opacity to 30. So it's still there, but it's also still nice and subtle. So you can see just a nice little touch of light on her, and, you know, it kind of makes her stand out a bit. And once again, we make another layer. And this is one of my favorite things to do that you'll probably notice I think I do a lot more than I used to, is I'll find a nice light blue. And again, using my brush, I'll just really roughly outline the area where the light hits her. I try to avoid the shadow areas when I do this, but for now that's just a splash of paint, and I set that layer to screen. For now I'm, I'm gonna keep it at, at the opacity that it is when I do this. So I set my eraser all the way to soft, and I just start gently erasing areas, and basically forming a bit of a rim light around the character. Again, you'll notice in some of the films they do this for, um, you know, if a character's up against a um, an area with a lot of sky. There's a there's the scene with Scar in his cave where as soon as the sky is hitting him from behind, there's this nice blue outline, and I I die for that. <laughs> I die for rim lights. 
So I like to include that in my characters. Just even even like characters who aren't in a scene. I just I enjoy giving them that kind of color. So there we go. And then I'll set the screen layer. Kind of depends on the character, but for her, a money it would probably be at forty percent. So it's still somewhat visible, but not too obvious and too much standing out and causing any issues. And finally, what I like to add is just a little bit of a little spot in her eye to show the light reflections. There we go. Sometimes I go more in depth on how I I shade the eyes, and I will like give them a lot more color and a lot more shadows but for simple things like this it's like just the little reflections fine and I'm normally happy with that so this is the way I would shade commissions this is the way I would shade um, reference sheets and you know that's just kind of ha generally how I would do it there we go let's just get rid of that there we go yeah I'm happy with that and now, oftentimes, you guys, I've had you guys also, like, mention that I seem to work really fast. So I just wanted to specify, I don't work as fast as you guys think. Um, a lot of the times for these videos, I try to be a lot quicker in the way I do things so the videos don't last multiple hours. Because um, I can't, I don't have access to editing. Um, so this took, didn't take very long at all. But with commissions, I find things often take longer because I'm overthinking things and I want to make sure they look decent. Whereas if this is just for me, this is enough and I'm happy with that. So yeah. So again, once again, this is what I would just call the base shading. This is like just a general method of shading. There's not much to it. It's very, it's not very, it's, it doesn't have specific ways of how things are done. It's just kind of, you know, putting shadows in specific areas like you always notice, again, if you look at certain screen caps, the characters will often have the shadows going behind their legs, like at the back here. You see that line? And they'll often have the, the belly shadow, and then the neck, sh and uh, not neck, sorry, the chin and cheek shadow that goes up like this. I'll actually need to maybe whip up some examples for you guys. I should have planned ahead, but I didn't. In the meantime, though, while I look for these examples, I'm actually going to answer some questions. Because I asked you guys to post some questions. I didn't get much of a response, but I thought it would be nice for me to, you know, just look in on, on the questions that were asked and, you know, just see what you guys want to know from me. Once again, I'm, not, I'm definitely not the go-to person for these kinds of things. This is just my opinion. This is how I do things. And, yeah. But I did, I've had been asked a couple of times about how I do specific things, and I did think it was a nice idea to perhaps tell you guys how things are done, or how I, am up, how I get up to things, and, you know. So, let me just, again, I really should have planned a bit. <laughs> I was keen to do this video. Alright, so let's find these questions. Here we go. At the same time, what I'm currently doing is I'm also just looking for a character I can show you guys how how they're shaded in specific ways. Actually I think I found something that works quite nicely to show that off a bit. Okay, in terms of your questions though, let's see what we've got while those are figuring things out. Okay, so I'm not going to say who said these questions because I'm going to paraphrase them a bit from my understanding. So basically I was asked that when it comes to my lighting and shading, what are some helpful tools I have, like using references from real life or using them from the film, how do I add the colors, and just, you know, like some people, how some people shade during, like depending on time of day or whatnot. So once again, um, the shading you just saw for a money was not specifically time of day shading. There was nothing about that. This is essentially just what I would like to call the base shading. In terms of um, shading it for scenes and whatnot, then I would use more colors based around that scene so the character can fit into it. Once again, when I draw, um, when I shade Gazi, my other character. I'll show you guys what I mean by, like, shading as if he were in a scene and, you know, more intensely and, you know, just all based around that. 
In terms of helpful tools, I hope the video did it kind of explain briefly what I use and how I use it. I don't use anything fancy. I'm, I'm working on Photoshop. I use an old Wacom pet, a tablet that's probably eight years old by now. You know. Okay, another thing I was asked was, does body type shape or like angles and lengths and width of characters ever pose a challenge for me when I'm shading? I would say depends on the character. In terms of a character like a money, she's a pretty basic character, so she's pretty easy to shade. I find her mane gives some issues, and often manes for male lions will get cause me a bit of an issue because they are like I said when I draw Igazi, you guys will see what I mean. But there's just a bit of a weirdness for me when it comes to shading that. In terms of angles, not always. It very much depends actually on a lot of things, like. Bigger characters, I will probably try to do softer, rounder shading to accentuate the fact that they're bigger characters. Whereas sharp, angular characters will will ex get more sharp, angular kind of shading. Okay. Oh, and in terms of blending colors and stuff when I'm shading, um, once again, I don't really do that. Like I said, I very much use a base color, and in terms of blurring, I just kind of blur the colors later on using the Gaussian Blur. Let me just whip up some examples here of what I'm talking about from the film. So, you'll see these are screen caps from The Lion King 2. And hopefully this will be able to, you know, show you guys what I mean. Okay, so here we have two scenes from Lion King 2, and that will kind of just show you what I mean. So in Lion King 2, more specifically, they have a very set way of shading. I don't completely like it, so like I said, I've just taken the method of the shading and I've kind of just turned it into my own thing. Because you often notice that their line art is over their shadows, and that to me looks a bit funny. But here you'll see what I meant with Amani, for example. So she, I gave Amani a similar kind of area of shading like you know over like under the chin and by the cheek and just you know going down in front of her little her shoulders here when you look at the full body of them as well you'll notice this is lifted paw here this is where the shadow goes and the shadow going along the belly like that and once again as an example let me just compare that to what I did let me just cut out Kiara over here there we go so you'll see here, she I did something similar to the way it was shaded. So, again with the paw, I also gave my character this backlit paw over here. And, you know, see you, you see a lot of co like direct comparisons and whatnot. I've just kind of turned it into my own thing. Um, also another thing that, TL, that The Lion King 2 does that I like is they also do this nice rim light. They give these characters this light... light, light um, ah. I can't speak today. This light rim, kind of based off the sky. So again, I enjoy doing that too. I, I try to be a little more subtle with it, very much depending on the character and what scene they're in. If the scene calls more intense lighting, I will be a lot more obvious with it. But yeah, so this is just like the way of which I've figured out how to shade over time and, you know, just what I've used as examples. I know the first Lion King does something similar. I just, I've always kind of liked the shading of Lion King 2 as well. Minus the color issues, but we're not going to get into that. Okay. So. Now that you've seen how I base shade a character, let's shade something different. So. Here is Igazi. This is one of my main characters. He's... Anyone who watches me knows um, kind of the base story behind him, but he's basically a tyrant kin, and he's evil, and he's just no good. Ever. And I wanted to show... I wanted to use him for shading, because I wanted to give you guys an idea of, like, how I would shade an, a character that is evil, how I would shade a character that is, like, would almost belong in a very intense scene. So, what I do for Igazi, for example, is I would just take a color pick at his mane, and then from there I would probably just kind of move around in, in my color area, and just find a color similar to his mane, and once again I would just base shade. So, you know, just me splotching color everywhere, with no real mindset basically it's covering him up entirely, and setting that to multiply. 
Now, with Igazi, because he's a more intense character, I will set the opacity to something different. I won't set it to 50, I'd probably set it to 60. Because I want it to be very intense, and I want it to be very serious. I'm not completely happy with that colour, so I'm going to quickly go back and change it to more of a dark purple. And now again, I, I, the question posed around what kind of colours I use, um, again, depend on the scene. But because this is an evil character and this is an intense scene, he's going to definitely have a lot more intense lighting and darker colours and co like very high contrast colours. So there will be a lot of red and a lot of dark purple, and then with the actual light, and there will be a lot of intense yellows and oranges just to keep the scene tense. So I'm going to now go into here, and what I want to do for him is I actually want him to have, let me just quickly put that there, I want him to quick, to have some under lighting. So basically that would be roughly where the light would hit him, and light would hit him like almost as if he was coming out of a dark cave or something like that, or he was standing by a fire, you know, just something intense that suits his character. So this is where the fun happens. So I, I, once again, I take my eraser and I just start erasing in the areas I want it in. And I often set my eraser to a nice, kind of like a soft edge. Not completely soft, but soft enough. And if I don't like it, I'll often change it later using the blur tool. Like right now, I think this might be a bit much, but I don't... I'll see how it comes out, because if I want the scene to be as intense as I'm claiming, then it might actually do rather well. I will be honest, my least favorite type of shading is probably under lighting, just because I've never, oh, I have never been fully happy with how I do it. I know, I've seen some other artists who do it a lot better, and they definitely have more method to it. I kind of just hope for the best, and that's all that matters. Now, because Igazi has a lot of, a lot going on here, I'm just selecting certain areas where I want, I want to be able to erase without erasing on other areas. Like, I want to keep his nose and teeth dark for now until I decide what else I'm going to do with him. And because the light's hidden him from below actually, then what we could do is we could just shade the under part of his nose, but not anything else. Once again, using my lasso tool because one of my more helpful tools that I will work on. And just getting rid of all that shadow below him. Now we're going to get into his mane, and you're going to just kind of see what I mean by manes. Like a lot of manes kind of come in different shapes and sizes, which is really fun to draw, but definitely not always easy to shade. In terms of this, though, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of just block out this shade in here. And we're going to make sure he has plenty of shading underneath, and basically his whole under area is going to be lit as if he, like I said, is standing in a, like, near a fire or something, and just, you know, looking very intense. So we're going to just kind of crawl that up there, but we're going to make sure to keep shadow from it, like, the shadow falling from his head. We're going to keep that there. But we're going to have a bit of bounce shadow hitting his mane, I feel. I feel that's important. So this is for this I'm just gonna make my eraser a little softer and I'm just gonna kind of go in there and just be more subtle with it. I can always change this later if I'm unhappy with it. There we go. And, as an added bonus, I will go in and do his eyes. So like I said, with the money, I didn't touch her eyes very much, and I, I didn't add any shading, I didn't do anything. But because this is kind of out of a scene, this will be just kind of shaded from the top to create this nice little dark shadow to give his look more intensity. So this is just the basic way of I sh that I would shade him. So... Again, lit from the bottom, he's looking very intense, and it suits. It would kind of just suits his general mannerisms and the way he is as a character, and the fact that he's clearly a force to be reckoned with. Then I go on top of that layer, and I find again a similar dark red or a dark purple color, and 
I Gaussian blur it, similar to how I did a money, but this time more from the top, because, like, once again, the, the light is coming from below him, so we don't want it to get in the way at the bottom and make it dark and kind of just mess that, I that whole thing up. Then, once again, another layer, and a nice intense orange, kind of like an orangey yellow. We can always change it afterwards. Another gradient at the bottom where the light source is coming from. And I set that to overlay. Because this, once again, because this is an intense scene, I don't change my opacity as, uh, like, on my layers as much. Because I kind of like the intense lighting. At most, I'd probably set that to an 80 and maybe just keep it like that. I don't want it to look too high contrast, but I would also like it, the intensity to stay and to be mm, as intense as I can keep it. One thing I did notice, though, is I don't completely like this purple so in, of his base shading, so I'm just going to go in there and just, there we go, maybe make it a little, almost a little more purple, I just wanted it to not be as dark. There we go. Nice and intense and evil for our boy. I actually wouldn't mind going in there and fixing his eyes, too. Like I said, when it comes to some shading, I do kind of just win it, and I hope for the best. Um... With commissions, I probably plan a bit more than I, I do with my own art. There we go. Let's just get rid of this weird shadow here. There we go. Now, like I said, I do love doing rim lights, but for characters like this, it's a bit different because I'll still give them rim lights, but for him, because of the way he's lit, it's gonna have to be done in a different way. So I'm gonna probably go find a nice light, very high saturated red or orange for this. And go to my top layer, and once again, just outline some areas and just figure it out. And maybe there's a kick light somewhere, or, you know, just something causing some extra light to hit him. We'll just see what sticks. Set it to my screen. And lower the opacity just to get an idea if this is going to work or not. If not, we can always change it later, and if it does, well then, you know, good for us. And so far, I'm not liking that very much. Let's see. Let's get rid of it up here, because that wouldn't make any sense anyways. But what we can do is keep it down here a bit. I'm trying to keep it nice and subtle, I guess, so it's not... So we, we know it's there, but it's not too obvious, and it's not too much in the way, and, you know. Maybe just fix some of the definition here and go into that curve. There we go. And once again, we're just going to add some light reflection in his eye. That's way too big. His other eye won't have as much reflection because it's... He's blind in it, so it's a lot more murky. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that murkiness. Another thing I sometimes like to do if I'm really getting into it is I'll go into his eye again and just apply a very bright version of his actual eye color and just make sure it touches the bottom of his eye and just set it to maybe color dodge and then just lower the opacity quite a bit. It just kind of brings him more intensity and kind of also high makes the shadows a lot more intense. I'll do something similar to the yellow areas of his eye. Definitely makes it look like his brow is causing a lot of shadow and giving him a lot of angst. We can set that to color dodge, I think. Now it's just erasing the areas that we don't want it to affect, like we don't want it to affect his the blue part of his eye, don't want it to affect anything outside his eye, and get it out of the shadow area. And then lower the opacity again, and, you know, just make sure it's nice and intense for him. So once again, like I said, this isn't just, the like, the way to do things, but this is the way I do things. <laughs> again, I kind of just want to soften certain areas with my blur tool, my blur tool, by the way, is set to normal, and it, the strength is at 100%. I'll just use it very lightly in certain areas and make sure it looks good. And yeah, so this is, once again, how I would shade something completely different to um, to just a basic character. If we can compare here quickly, so that was Igazi, here's Money. 
So once again, her shading, super basic, keep it to the point, would probably just be used as a base idea for a character that is not in the scene, and will probably not be put into a scene. Whereas with Igazi, he looks like he belongs in a scene, he looks like he's in an, a very intense moment where he's about to do something typical of him, and, you know, it, it, it suits him a lot more. I don't always shade headshots like this, but for a character like him, I definitely would, and I would probably go a little more out with the idea and probably want to make sure it's as intense as I could make it. Another thing I just want to quickly give a nice try to is, due to the creases near his eye, I wouldn't mind giving him a bit more shadow there. Just do a bit more of intensity. You know, get really into his nose crinkles, get into his brow crinkles over there. I also like to do this for sad scenes where, um, like the characters crying or like scrunching up their face as I sometimes like to go back and just get into the crinkle areas and just kind of enhance them a bit. And set that to multiply and just, you know, erase the areas I don't like. And just make sure it looks, you know, not too obvious but also still not too overly subtle. Like we want it to be obvious that he's angry in this scene so we want to make sure he's nice and angry looking. Now this is also something the films don't do. The films don't always go into this level of detail with shading. They won't always apply creases in certain areas. And I, I like, I mean, no, obviously it's no offense to the film. It's not like they had to do it. I mean, the film's amazing. But you know, it's just something that I like to do myself, and I kind of would like to add. And then we just lighten that up a little bit. So now we, he's definitely, like, you can see the anger in his face, you can see the way his face is scrunching over and his nose is acting up and everything. And, you know, it just gives him a lot more of an intense look. Run while you can. Once again, I just want to go over the shading by his eye, make sure his brow is, like, nice and heavy on the eye. There we go. Okay. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm... Like I said, I'm not a professional in how I do things. This is very much just my way of doing things. I'm happy to do more tutorials if you guys would like to see some more tutorials. You just have to let me know. Um, if I do more shading tutorials, I would love to do another one in a scene so I can show you guys how I would incorporate a character into a scene. Um, but yeah, you let me know. Comment below and let me know if you guys liked this, if you want to see more, what kind of videos you want to see. Because I really do want to take the time to... I'll just make tutorials, but just make more videos for you guys now that I can. Eventually, I'll, I'm going to purchase some software to edit and hopefully maybe make the videos a bit better. But I sometimes like the real-time videos because I feel, you know, you guys could maybe follow along or you guys could just, you know, just sit and listen or play some music while it's going. And, you know, it's just something I personally enjoy, but you guys will have to let me know. So thanks for com for looking at uh, watching i guess <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing i'm not a personality <laughs> thanks for watching guys um again let me know below if you want anything else if you want to see more things you know just if you enjoy this even cool bye